You might notice that no matter what's happening in today's economy, housing prices seem to rarely take a dramatic plunge. It's not just your imagination. There's a solid economic foundation behind this phenomenon. Despite fluctuations in the stock market and other sectors, housing prices have a reputation for being exceptionally stable or sticky, that is. Well, let's find out why. Well, it boils down to six economic reasons that keep the housing market steady, even when everything else is in turmoil. These factors range from government policies designed to stabilize the market to the simple truth, the simple fact that everybody needs a place to live creating a constant demand for housing. In this video, we're going to explore these six reasons in detail. We're gonna dive into how supply and demand, interest rates, and even psychological factors play a crucial role in maintaining home values. This isn't about complex economic theories, but real tangible reasons that affect homeowners and buyers like you every day. Whether you're in the market to buy a home, sell one, or just curious about how the housing market works, understanding these dynamics can provide valuable insights. So do me a favor, stay with me till the end, and I'm going to break down the economics behind why housing prices tend to stay put in a way that's easy to understand and directly relevant to your experiences. Let's look into the world of emotional attachment and its profound impact on the housing market. Imagine you're selling a home filled with a lifetime of memories your child's first step in the living room, family gatherings in the dining room, and quiet evenings by the fireplace. These aren't just memories, these are chapters of your life. This emotional bound often leads homeowners to place a value on their home that is above the market rate, anchoring their expectations not in the present market, but in their sentimental worth of their personal experiences. Now enter the negotiation stage. You're approached by potential buyers who, understandably, are evaluating the property based on current market conditions, comparable homes, physical attributes. They don't see the home through the same emotional lens as the seller. They're looking at the numbers, the investment potential, and perhaps their future memories, not the seller's past. Here lies the crux of the issue. Negotiating with somebody deeply attached to their home is like trying to reconcile two different languages. One speaks in one language of sentiment and personal history, while the other converses in the cold, hard dialect of dollars and cents. The seller, driven by emotional attachment, might reject objectively reasonable offers, holding out for a buyer who seems to have the same invisible value they do. This disconnect can lead to prolonged listing periods with the property lingering on the market as the seller waits for an offer that matches their inflated valuation. This scenario isn't rare. It's a common narrative in a real estate transactions worldwide where the emotional value and the market value of home diverge. Sellers wrapped up in the warmth of their memories often have difficulty accepting that the market doesn't pay for sentiment. This emotional premium can make negotiations challenging, if not outright impossible, without the intervention of a skilled real estate agent who can bridge the gap between the emotional and market value. The impact? A market where homes are priced above what the data suggests they're worth, leading to the stickiness in housing prices. This dynamic fueled by emotional attachment of countless sellers contributes significantly to the overall resistance to price reductions, even when logical market analysis would suggest otherwise. Understanding this emotional aspect is crucial, not just for the buyers and sellers, but for anyone looking to navigate the complex waters of the real estate market. It's a reminder that behind every listing, there's a story, a history, and a human element that numbers alone can't fully capture. Right or wrong, it happens a lot. Venturing further into the landscape of supply and demand imbalances, we uncover several pivotal factors that play a crucial role in the enduring robustness of housing prices. One of the most significant contributors is the prolonged timeline required to bring new homes to the market. The journey from planning to completion is not only time consuming, but fraught and regulatory hurdles and logistical challenge leading to a slow replenishment of housing stock. This sluggish pace cannot keep up with the ever growing demand, maintaining upward pressure on prices. In short, it takes a long time to build a house. In the midst of this imbalance, an interesting phenomenon has emerged. Homeowners who secured mortgages at historically low rates are now experiencing what's known as, you've heard it before, the lock-in effect. With current rates climbing, these homeowners are 
disinclined. They don't want to sell their house or repurchase at a higher borrowing cost. This reluctance is expected to contribute to a persistently low inventory, potentially until 2033, as these homeowners hold on to their low mortgage rates for as long as possible. It makes sense. They want to maintain that low interest rate. They want to maintain as much positive cash flow as we, they possibly can. Simultaneously, national builders are adapting to the ever-evolving market landscape by shifting their focus towards building homes for rent rather than for sale. This strategic pivot responds to the growing demand for rental properties, but it also contributes to the scarcity of purchasable homes, further exacerbating the supply demand imbalance. While higher mortgage rates have somewhat moderated demand, a demographic shift is underway that promises to sustain pressure on the housing market. Millennials, a substantial portion of the population, are reaching the average first time homebuyer age of 33 every day. This milestone signals a significant continuous influx of potential buyers, challenging the already strained supply and keeping demand robust. This confluence of factors, extended timelines for new home construction, the lock-in effect among current homeowners, national builders shifting towards rental properties, and the demographic wave of millennial buyers paints a complex picture of housing market's future. While higher rates may temper demand momentarily, the foundational issue of supply and demand imbalances persist, underpinning the stickiness of housing prices and forecasting a market that remains resilient and dynamic. Understanding these multifaceted dynamics is essential for buyers, sellers, and market observers alike. The housing market with its deep-rooted supply and demand challenges stands a testament to the enduring value of necessity of homeownership, driving the conversation of housing affordability and market sustainability. Illiquidity in the housing market is a critical factor that markedly slows the pace of price adjustments. Distinguishing real estate from the more volatile realms of the stock market and commodities, Unlike the instantaneous nature of stock trading, selling a home is a multifaceted process laden with steps that each take time, negotiation, and careful consideration. First, there's the listing process. It involves market analysis to price the home competitively, yet optimistically. Homeowners must also prepare their property, which can include repairs and staging, to make it as appealing as possible to potential buyers. This phase alone can span weeks or even months depending upon the property's condition and the seller's circumstances. Once listed, the negotiation phases kick in. Unlike the stock market where prices are transparent and trades can be executed in milliseconds, real estate transactions involve back and forth negotiation between the buyer and the seller. Offers and counteroffers are the norms as both parties strive to reach an agreement that aligns with their financial goals and perceptions of the property's value. This step introduces additional delays as each negotiation round takes time and often requires compromise. Legal formalities add another layer of complexity. Real estate transactions are governed by a myriad of laws and regulations varying greatly by location. From drafting and reviewing contracts to ensuring compliance with local property laws, the legal aspect of selling a home is both time-consuming and essential for a legitimate sale. Inspections and appraisals are crucial components that can further slow the process. These evaluations are necessary to assure the buyer of the property's condition and to satisfy the lender requirements. However, they can also lead to further negotiations if issues are uncovered, extending the timeline even further. Together, these factors contribute to the illiquidity of the housing market. The comprehensive nature of selling a home, encompassing listing, negotiation, legalities, and inspection means that transactions can take months to complete. Of course, that's not the norm, but I've certainly seen transactions take months on months to get done. This extended timeline inherently makes the housing market less reactive than the stock market, where liquidity allows for immediate response to news, earning reports, and other market moving events. The illiquidity of the real estate market, therefore, acts as a buffer against rapid price fluctuations. While it can be a source of frustration for sellers eager to close or buyers ready to move, it 
also instills a level of stability in the market, protecting against the swift and sometimes severe price swings seen in a more liquid market.